Good morning, everyone. It's uh, today is September 20th, and this is the Elementary School Building Committee. Seeing that we have a quorum, I'm going to call the meeting to order, but my first task before turning it over to Margaret to preview uh, the agenda is to make sure all the committee members can hear and we can hear them. So I'll just call out names and let me know all as well. Melissa? Here. Jonathan? Here. Tammy? Okay, I'll come back to Tammy. Um, Bruce? Here. Paul? Here. Deb? Here. <clears throat> Rupert? Present and unaccounted for. <laughs> Thank you. Simone? Here. And Tammy, uh, let's see. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Tammy, uh, just let us know when you've logged on that you can hear us. I can see that you're on, but I don't see a picture. Uh, I see Deb Leonard also joined us, I think, while you were doing that. Who else joined us? Deb Leonard. Yeah, we got Deb. I got okay. Deb, I think. And I've we got have, we have Tammy twice. I have Tammy. I have She's Tammy. obviously like, trying. There may be some connection issue with Tammy. So why don't we get started? Um, and Margaret will preview, uh, tell us the agenda and remind people about uh, the overall schedule. And then we'll get to the big news of the day. Yeah. And actually, Kathy, I think I'm going to start with the big news of the day and then go to the schedule because I know, we know everybody is looking for news of the bids. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kathy, you need to enable screen sharing. Okay. Uh, okay, I believe I just did it. You did, thank you. Okay, team. All righty. Except, okay, can everybody see the agenda? Yes. Okay, so it's short, by the way. Um, we're gonna give you a report on the bidding followed by an update on the schedule um, because the bidding informs the schedule. Um, and that is pretty much it. There are some invoices to look at, actually two months worth because we did this committee did not meet last month. And then we'll be taking public comment. So any questions about that before we launch? No. Okay. Well, it's been a while since we've seen you. Um, we extended the bid period a couple of times um, in response to questions that we received from the bidders. Um, we also discovered in the process, we had got some late breaking news from one of the utilities that they wanted a design change. Um, and that has led this, the, the bids to come in. Um, you know, we had thought we would be giving you this report uh, last month, but the news is good. Um, we are under budget and it appears that we have, uh, we have not a hundred percent confirmed this yet, but it appears that we have a low bidder. So, um, here's where we stand. So the, in a nutshell, the bid we received yesterday is this number 73,475. Now you will remember that, um, the we had pre-purchased some things so this um chart kind of puts that puts it in context so um going well going backwards so this is the msba funding agreement number it's 81337167 that is the number we wanted to be at or below um in fact when you add up all the pieces and the results of the bids we're actually below that funding agreement by about $4.8 million, which is really fabulous news. So just to kind of go through the detail, here's the early site package. Um, and you will remember that there were savings there. I don't remember the exact number, but maybe 1.6 million. So what we've got here is a sort of pylon of savings. Then you will remember that we recommended and we have moved ahead with pre-purchasing some uh, long lead electrical equipment, which has been purchased. Um, we are holding a value for the bidding of the installation of Quirkine, because uh, again, hopefully you'll remember that the design team 
um, and the city settled on this, um, sorry, the town bidding that independently because of the liability issues. So the total that was committed before yesterday afternoon was a little over $3 million. The low bidder yesterday is a company called CTA, and I'm gonna talk about them a little bit. So what that means is the total of the committed costs for 76.5 million, and again, the value below the funding agreement is 4.8. So, I mean, this is this is great news. Um, and then just as a reminder on the contingencies, there are two kinds of contingencies. So soft cost contingencies are for services and fees. And we had a budget of 813. We've committed a little bit of it. We've talked about uh, those numbers in previous meetings. We had a construction contingency of a little over 4 million. And um, that has, we used a little bit of that for uh, the purposes of buying the temporary traffic signal. So um, in total, we've still got the current available contingencies are 4.6 million. So I'm gonna stop talking for a minute and see if there are any questions about all of that. Kathy has a question. Um, why don't you go to Jonathan and Paul before me? Okay, Jonathan. Well, it's not so much a, a, a question as is. I just want to thank the design team and and answer for for all their efforts in getting us to this point. This is this is to me quite a, an accomplishment in a very volatile bidding market. So I will be brief and stop at that. Yeah, and I I also want to give a huge a huge vote of gratitude to Danisco and also to Bob Parent, who has sort of been our partner in this. But at the end of the day, the the bulk of the work the responsibility and the liability falls on Danisco and they have are very much deserving of everyone's gratitude. So Paul, question? Uh, yeah, so um, it'd be good to share the other two bids so we know what the uh, universe mm -hmm. is like for the three bids and, um, and note that even though this is a low bid, it's still subject to review and mm -hmm. you know contingencies on making sure that they're compliant with all the requirements that were in the bid docs. Yeah, and we're going to, because Danny is going to talk a little bit about okay, that. Okay, good. good. Um, Kathy. I, I saw Rupert's hand go up. Did it, it go down again, Rupert? <laughs> okay. So I I, I want to, I guess, follow up on Paul's, but also on Jonathan. It, it This is thrilling news. And when you put the other two bids up, all three bids were below budget. So we've got, we had, mm -hmm. we have three viable bids, which it means the project is now got a green light other than what Paul just said. So I didn't know the timing on that review of the CTA bid, Margaret, um, on when when this is final was my first question. And the second is my understanding of what, when we come in below budget, will this move on to the contingency line? So we'll, we'll be seeing that we're under our target budget, but it means we've got a an even bigger buffer. Mm -hmm. if, if if that's correct, because this we'll we'll have to put out some sort of what, what I'm asking is sort of timing on letting the broad community know the good news, but mm -hmm. letting them know it accurately. So thank you. So let me let me talk to the contingency uh, to the what happens with the savings, because that's an easy one. I'm gonna ask Asenia to talk a little bit about the other bidders um, uh, or to show you, uh, cause actually all of this information is online, by the way, if anybody wants to take a look at it. So what will happen now, cause the, M the MSBA were, they were on us yesterday morning, like send us the results. You know, we wanna see the results of the bid, just checking we're on target. Um, the very next thing that will happen is they will, write to the town and say, you have bid savings, what do you wanna do with it? And um, what we would recommend the standard procedure is that the town uh, prepare a letter which we can provide a template for, which says that the bid savings will go into contingency. That would be the standard practice. So that's really Paul's call, um, but that 
I mean, that's really typically what we see. So, um, Ksenia, do you want to respond to Kathy's question by sharing a little bit about bid docs and where people can see this information? Yeah, let, let us uh, show you a few more things that we prepared that may help to clarify, and then we'll take more questions. Um, they might crystallize and some might get answered along the way. So, <laughs> firstly, oh, you know what? And I'm having trouble sharing my screen. Um, I, it's only one person at a time. It's it it says you can share while well, while you're struggling finding that. Let me just make sure Alicia just joined us and Tammy's here. So Tammy, can you hear us and we can hear you? Yes, thank you. You got to hear the good news. That's great. Yes. Alicia. Yes, I can. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, welcome. Ksenia, I have bid docs up. Do you want me to share the bid docs page? Okay, I think it's finally working. Okay. I apologize. It's my my Zoom. The last several days has been misbehaving. Um, okay, so I think you know by now that I'm a big fan of pretty pictures uh, for clarifying where we are in the general sense. Um, the bar, the overall bar represents the entire project budget. Um, and within that, um, the green bit is what's already under contract. Uh, you know, mostly architect, OPM, and early site package, right? Um, with a few little services here and there added in. The um, testing agency is in there. Uh, the third party testing agency is going to be making sure that the construction is up to the correct standard of quality. The little pink bar is the electrical equipment was that was pre-purchased in order to get ahead of some of the lead time issues that the electrical industry has continued to experience actually more rather than less since the pandemic um, and since all the wars in the world. And then the uh, highlighted section is the total of uh, the blue and the yellow together of a total of the bids that were what we received uh, today. Uh, we presented a version of this uh, in the last meeting, which I guess was now two months ago, where that this overall bar was longer by about $4 million, right? <clears throat> and at that time, the only news we had is the file sub bids that were received at the time. Uh, this is more or less the same on this part uh, as it was, except that uh, we had to rebid electrical and repackage a little bit. Um, but all the scope is still in there overall. Um, so a little less than half um, of the low bid, the, the apparent low bid, uh, to be confirmed is those bids that we showed you, the, you know, the good news, the seeming good news that we had a couple months ago. Um, or was it a month? Um, and the yellow is the new news that we received uh, yesterday, and that includes the general contractor's own costs and all the costs of the trade bids that are not uh, subject to a file sub bid law. So we don't get to see the detail of those. Um, it's tempting to dig deep and analyze um, on, a, on, a, on a trade by trade basis when you first get the uh, file subs because you can see them, right? You don't get to see inside this number as much. But the, but the good news obviously is that because the overall package uh, came in at a lovely savings, again, presumed and to be confirmed, but all of the general bids were under. Um, that leaves us a lot larger contingency um, at the end. We had about $4 million tracking before, and now about another four is added to that. Um, and the little pink section here is what's left to procure, and that is um, things like furniture for the building, technology for the building, um, more or less that. Um, the things that the next steps to get um, the general contractor under contract is to have them submit forms that they are allowed to submit after this point um, to demonstrate that they're able to commit and able to perform work in compliance 
with the diversity requirements. Um, so, you know, uh, women and minority owned business participation within their bids. So we'll be um, in touch with the parent low bidder to get that sorted out. Um, if all goes well, we'll, we'll then proceed to contract award. Um, I do want to show you, I do have bid docs open and I want to show you how one gets here. Um, if you wanted to look at this yourself, uh, biddocs.com, just biddocs.com. You don't have to log in. You click on the big giant orange button at the top that says bid listings. And then you search either for AMR, so I type for Fort, for Fort River, because it's pretty unique. Um, you go to the project and then on the left panel, you go to bid results and you could see the three bid, uh, bids will pause here because we this is information we wanted to see, but I just also wanted to show you that you can download the bids. Um, I am confident that all the bidders have downloaded each other's bids and they are looking um, at, at that too. So the second bidder was J&J &J, um, at a little over $75 million. And the third bidder was Fontaine at 75.6 million, whereas CTA was at 73 and a half, rough, roughly. So the second and third bidders were somewhat closer to each other and CTA was um, a substantial benefit. Um, so uh, more competitive. Um, so that is where we are. Any questions on any of this? I guess my, my one would be to you and the team, Ksenia, as you're doing this review, when is it final in terms of um, a green light that we're, we're ready to go? When CTA submits the necessary documents specifically regarding uh, minority and women-owned business participation. And we confirm that those documents say what they need to say, right? Um, and that if there's further, um, if there's nothing further necessary at that point, because they're satisfying requirements, we proceed to contract execution, um, which will take as long as signing, you know, the dual signing of the contract. With it. And Ksenia, so, they, 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 have, they have a week to do, submit the M and WBA, right? They do have, I think they have, they might have 10 days even. Yeah, uh, they, they, they have a week, but uh, we're hoping that they will be eager to act sooner. I see Bruce's hand is up. Bruce? Um, I noticed then that that uh, bid spread between the three bidders is about 2.2 .2 million. I guess a question perhaps for anyone, um, uh, Denisco, I suppose. Uh, can we uh, can we draw any conclusions from that bid spread? I mean, it seems to me to be fairly narrow. Uh, that seems to be good, but uh, I'm a long time out of the game. I'd just like uh, to see what whether whether we can be confident of of. Uh, it seems to me that this is an indication of confidence in the documentation. But uh, I'd just like some comments on uh, what we can learn from the bid spread. Uh, I'm. On one hand, uh, there's a distance between CTA and J and J. Uh, CTA already just casually reached out to the office, uh, uh, saying they, uh, you know, are are ready, willing, and want to know the next steps uh, immediately. So that kind of uh, allayed any fears that maybe CTA might be looking at a mathematical error, which which is something that can happen when somebody is much lower than the next bidder. So that's out of the woods. Uh, I think that CTA was very aggressively trying to establish a foothold in the uh, western part of the state. And uh, we've built schools with all three of these these bidders, so I think that they know us. And it was a pretty aggressive market. Is it? Yeah, it's about a, a the spread between 
about one percent. I mean, it's it's a, yeah. it's a very small spread. And you know, again, to to Jonathan's comment, to me, this indicates the documents were very good, right? That they're that the bidders are not finding a big discrepancy in what they see as the value of the project. Jonathan. I, I would agree with Margaret that that's that's a really nice tight cluster mm -hmm. of, of bids. Um, it, it pleases me. <laughs> um, I want to do um, two things. I don't see any other hands. I want to just give you a little bit of information about CTA. And then I'm hoping that Rick and Tim, who have worked with CTA, might say a little bit about that experience. So um, about CTA, I mean, you can find this website. Um, this is their website. They're based in Waltham. They were founded in 2000. Um, it's, I will say, I it's definitely in the uh, world of contractors. This is a younger firm, right? The three partners are Lyle Coughlin, Pat Tompkins, and Jeff Hazelwood. Um, they have done a lot of public work. They're, they're body of work is largely um, public work. And I'm not going to click on these other tabs, but you can see they've done public safety work. They've done other kinds of work. If you look just at their elementary schools, um, you'll notice that some of these are renderings and some of these are real photographs. They have a substantial body of elementary school projects. So I would encourage you to sort of poke around on their website and see more about them. But Rick and Tim, do you want to say something about your experience with CTA? Tim, you're muted. We've had a good half dozen uh, schools or so, Tim, right? Built with them. Uh, Tim and I uh, did a K-5 in Woburn that they did uh, five or six years ago. Uh, they did an early childhood center in Lexington a couple years ago under a very, very aggressive schedule. They had 12 months to build a 20,000 square foot new building, uh, and they did it. Uh, Tim's had some recent experience uh, as a building committee member, so maybe he can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, they just finished the elementary school in Swampscott. The dedication was this weekend, actually. Um, um, it's a larger school. It's 150,000 square feet on a less than six acre site. And Ledge was basically right at the surface, and they had almost the same number of geothermal wells, and they did not have an early site package. So, um, you know, there's considerable complexity on a smaller site with the same schedule as us. So, uh, you know, between that experience from a building committee member's point of view and the work that uh, Rick mentioned we did in Woburn, uh, where I was day to day with them, um, you know, th they're capable of, of the task at hand. Okay. I'm looking to see if anyone else has any other questions on other than a sigh of relief and <laughs> and smiles of excitement that that uh, we're going to be moving forward. Well, and the other good news for this committee is that um, the level of complexity that we've had in the last few months in terms of um, moving pieces that um, we need to update you on um, is going to now get simpler. So this is my little overall view. So uh, let's see, we are here, right? Bits came in yesterday. Um, <clears throat> we have a meeting in October, October 18th and a meeting in November, and then a meeting just before the holidays. Um, on the, the bid, the bid, the procurement line, we're done with the major procurements. So um, we're now gonna be working on the, uh, what, once the documentation on M and WBE, um, how they're gonna meet those goals is satisfied, we will move ahead with the contract award. 
And although we haven't had a conversation with them, we do expect that they're gonna be on site in early October. So there are some introductions that need to be made to the district, particularly to Tammy, um, but that's gonna be happening sort of outside of um, this group's view. Um, the cons as a result of all of that, the construction meetings will presumably also return um, on a weekly basis in October. And then there's a couple of, I would say, kind of closing out the design services piece um, and moving into construction. So um, Ksenia and Bob Parent are working with the town's insurer, insurer uh, broker to confirm the pricing for this builder's risk insurance and to execute that policy. Um, Answer and Danisco are working together on submitting 100% uh, documents to the MSBA, which is really a kind of closeout piece with a final schedule and the and the bid package. And then there is uh, a package that goes to the uh, USGBC uh, that documents the lead intentions. So, um, and then the last piece, which is important, is once. The dust has settled on all of that. Um, we will be working with the MSBA to draft what's called the, the bid amendment to the project funding agreement. So once it's bid, then you sort of say, okay, this is the real cost of the project as opposed to the estimated cost of the project. And that is where um, we anticipate that the contingency, what has what is bid savings will sort of move in onto the contingency line on item if that is Paul's direction. So. Any questions about that? Bruce has a question. Um, it may be premature, but um, the, 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 the extra month that was taken in the uh, bid process, um, do, do we anticipate any uh, negative uh, or complications or anything uh, uh, with the the next two years associated with a month delay at this point? I mean, seasonal. So I don't know. Is there any, is there any is there, is there anything we have to pick up or focus on or or set our minds to to recover from that uh, one month delay or is that uh, more or less perfunctory? First, I think I'll say that. Uh, general bidders are not at all shy about complaining about the schedule during bid questions, and there were none. Uh, there were uh, <laughs> none when we issued the the delay in the rebid. There were none when we uh, uh, issued uh, did one of the changes uh, in scopes shifting from one uh, sub bidder to general contractor uh, scope of work. And so on that end, I don't think it's uh, going to be an issue. They still have until June, I get all my years mixed up, 26, right, Tim? To uh, substantially complete the building and move on to the next. So I think we're they're in good shape for that. Again, the site is shovel ready. Uh, the first thing that they're going to do is start pushing that big pile of dirt around to uh, bring the whole site up to grade, and they should be able to start digging foundations. So they're still limited uh, to go as fast as they want to go. Uh, submit those footing shop drawings, and they can go. Senya. Senya? I'll just add, thank you, Rick. I'll just add that when you're still so far out from the end date of a project and the entirety of it is subject to the planning of how they'll go about executing it, um, <clears throat> it's a matter of money, right? It's a matter of money to add, if they feel that it's short, to add um, money to their bid for overtime work, to work Saturdays if they need to, right? Like that, those are the acceleration tactics um, that if necessary, get added. And what's important here is that all of the delay that we've seen in the bid process happened before the bids were submitted. It was known, 
it was documented, it was factored in, and we still got, got favorable bids. So if there were mitigation strategies that the bidders needed to apply um, to get to the date that is required, they have already factored them in. That's a good point. So somehow uh, screens are showing up. Sorry, that was me. <laughs> um, you know, Margaret showed quickly flash by the next meeting dates, and they should be on everyone's calendar for October, November, and December. Um, the one exception might be Melissa, um, because you weren't on the original setting it up, but she'll make sure. And um, there's also a plan, as I understood it, to show us meeting dates for next year so we can put holds on our calendar. And just the the meetings will be shorter. Um, we will have invoices um, and updates, and then there are pieces along the way. But just to make sure everyone has those on their calendar is the note I wanted to make. There are whole Melissa has been added to the hold. Okay, she's been- For great. this year, yeah. So I'm not seeing any other hands up. So I think the next thing, Margaret, is the invoices. That's right. I'm gonna turn it over to Ksenia and Connor. Connor, it's all you. We pull it up now. Can we see it? Yep. Perfect. So as always, I know it's been a couple of months, but uh, we've seen this a couple of times, our executive summary. And um, we can see here, this is our path forward and it shows where we've been as well, where we currently are. So um, at the moment, it doesn't show the bids that just came in. And that's because it was, this report was run a couple of days ago before the bids actually came in and they're not under contract yet um, as well. But that'll push it up. We saw Ksenia's graph a little while ago and that'll push this yellow bar uh, up to about this 80 million line uh, once a contract is signed. So next time we should have a much larger chunk of this white um, uncommitted uh, piece filled in. But this green piece is the previously invoice uh, amounts. This black little sliver right here, this little line is the current invoice package, which includes uh, both invoices from the July package and the August package. And the yellow here is the current unbilled portion of con contracts we currently hold. And down here, the current invoice package, which we'll get to is just a little over um, $200,000, and that is less than 1% of the total project budget. Uh, this has stayed the same since last time. It just shows our spending on feasibility, uh, soft costs, and uh, hard costs, which includes the projection for the um, uh, construction with the bids we just got. This is our cash flow right here. We can see these green lines here, our previous invoice packages and our current invoice package right here, uh, which lines up with this yellow line, which just shows where we are in time, uh, August. So this current invoice package includes these two little green lines down here, um, which is the July and the August invoice packages. Uh, these gray lines, which hopefully is not too hard to see on your screens. I know Sharon can kind of mess it up sometimes but that was our original projection. And we can see we're not too far off of that. At the moment, the blue is our current projections uh, going forward. And then these lines are just the cumulative projection lines, how these stack up over time. And you can see our green box here, how much we have currently invoiced for uh, at this time, which is about a little over 8 million. And that includes the early site package, things like that. So, so just, Stay on it in a moment. Okay. On to the invoice package. And I'll zoom out a little bit so we can 
pull it all together. Hopefully you guys can still see it okay. But like I said, this invoice package includes invoices for both the July package and the August package. So that's why we have two answer invoices um, on this package. And those combined, we have one for July, which for about $17,000, and one for August, which is about $19,500. And they combine for about $36,500, which is about 1% of uh, answers contract. And we'll have completed billing um, about almost 30% of our contract at this point, with about 70% remaining. Likewise, The NISCO also has invoices for both July services and August services, as well as um, some consultant invoices. And in total, that adds up to be about 3% of um, their total contract, 70% uh, complete as the design phase is mostly over, bidding phase is mostly over. So they just have uh, you know construction tasks that need to be done, so another 30%. Uh, here to still bill. And then we have a couple of old invoices that were paid um, a long time ago that are just on here for record purposes. There are a couple of Gazette ads uh, for a couple of procurement items, I believe. Um, the generator and the switch gear that um, I think Ksenia talked about earlier as some of our pre purchased electrical gear. So now scrolling into our invoices. This is the first answer invoice for July. Sorry. And the backup here. Let me know if you guys have any questions either about the invoices as we scroll through them or um, the reports that we showed at the beginning. So this is the August invoice for answer. back up here. Uh, the first Denisco invoice. This is for one their consultant invoices, reimbursable invoices. Next, um, Dennis Go Invoice. This is their July invoice, I believe. Yep, July invoice. Just the back up here to that last Denisco invoice. And then this is the August Denisco invoice. And now moving on to the Gazette ones, which have already been paid. And they're just on here for record. Is it? Before we move on to the vote, Connor, would you mind jumping back to the executive summary at the top? I no want to say another word about the cash flow. So, <clears throat> projecting construction cash flows long in advance is a bit of a guesstimating, educated guesstimating game. Um, as we <clears throat> get into onboarding a contractor executing their contract we're going to get more specific information from them and this will become updated uh, so they will always only be um, cash flowing of a part of a work that's theirs and ours will always in incorporate the other services and expenses expenses that are part of the process services that overall and as we get beyond this point so um Melissa Connor and I have had a really um, in in incredibly productive conversation earlier in the week about um, 
how to present um, going forward the piece of this that is a contingency, right? That will, you know, when, once we establish and confirm going into um, construction, what that number is. So next time you see this, it may look a little different and we're open to comment on how you would prefer um, it presented. Um, this is showing that all the money in the project, it's projecting spending all the money in the project by the end of a, a job. It is not the goal, right? It is not a goal to to do that. It is not a goal to um, spend all of the allocated contingency. Um, it, it's just far premature to be, to talk about not doing that also, right? So it's a kind of a conservative picture. Um, so next time you see this, what we'll do is we'll make it easier to see on this graph how much of this is projected uh, spending associated with contracts that are under, um, that are executed. Um, and we'll probably take all of the contingency money and move it into one specific month toward the end, toward the back of it, just graphically. So it sticks out literally like a sore thumb um, or like a very healthy thumb because it's healthy to have contingency. Um, so uh, that, that is just some like a thing to understand about it. Um, and that, uh, you know, Graphically, right now, it's laid out in a somewhat simplified way, and you will start seeing it take more realistic shapes as we move forward. Right. I think we're ready to ask for a vote. I move um, to approve the invoices as presented. Shane seconds. And um, if you take this down, I can see all the faces to call. I should just first see if there are any questions on any anything that was just presented. And I think as everyone knows, when we're seeing these, they've already been reviewed by staff. So it's we're not seeing them for the first time. So I will call out based on uh, the order of people on the screen. Melissa? Yes. Bruce? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Rupert? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Deborah? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Simone? Yes. Alicia? Yes. And I'm a yes. It's unanimous with, I believe, three people missing. Allison, Bernal, and Doug. Um, are there any other comments or questions before I open it up? Um, I see Ksenia's hand is up. I will let everybody else take a moment if I let anybody else go first, if anybody wants. No, okay. So I just want to say that as we prepare to resume construction on site, um, we'll be out there, so it'll be supported. There will be nothing that should change about the traffic pattern because we'd already put the fence perimeter for construction in place. We'd already put separate access, a separate access driveway into that construction perimeter in place. We've already got the other driveway dedicated to school traffic. Uh, people have already had a little piece of the spring to start getting used to it. Um, and in terms of, so th this might be one of the loveliest, I mean, fingers and toes crossed, ways to get going into the major end of a project, fingers and toes crossed, because we've already sort of, I, I'm, I'm going to say done a dry run for this because it had um, all of the complexity and communication around it that was necessary at the time. But we essentially, the contractor is going to come in that into a space that's been sitting empty and protected for them and begin their work there. Um, and if there are noise, that's the only thing, right? Um, or uh, traffic, like the heaviness of traffic, um, concerns and issues, we continue to be open. Please con contact us, anybody in the public, you know, Tammy, I'm looking at you especially um, as we go on but we are as well set up to get going. 
without a whole lot of, you know, initial hoopla as we could possibly be. Again, fingers and toes crossed, and I'm hoping it didn't just jinx us. That's great. Any other comments or questions? Um, okay, I am I'm not seeing any hands up. Um, I'm going to open it for public comments. We are open for public comments. Please raise your hand if you would like to speak. Okay, I see one person. Maria, I have uh, allowed you to speak. Thank you so much, Maria Kapicki, South Amherst. Um, congratulations, truly. Um, this is what a good project and a good project team looks like. Um, from the design to the documents that were clearly uh, well put together to go out to bid, to the presentations, thank you, Ksenia, for all your very clear presentations about what's going on. Um, uh, so pleased to have this kind of contingency also going into the project. Amazing, great work there. Uh, we all, uh, you are well aware that it, there have been a number of us in the uh, public that have been following this closely, and we've had a lot of uh, disagreements or, or information to share, and you did hear a lot of that, and you responded to that, and that is uh, much appreciated. Um, speaking as a member of the community, uh, I am so pleased that the fields are going to be improved as part of this, and that was able to be included in this. That's going to make a huge difference to not only the school, and obviously the school is the primary focus, but that was really important. Um, and I'm hoping that all this means that the backstop is secured. So hopefully that can be in there. Um, also, I just want to say how wonderful it is that we're going to be moving the ball forward with this project on climate and environmental goals, the geothermal, the, the PV, and the fact that this is going to be net zero, the corkeen, the fact that this is going to have uh, such a low EUI. Uh, I'm hoping that this also means that, and I, I'm not sure where this factors in, I'd love to hear about it at the next meeting, that all the equipment and those kind of purchases um, <clears throat> can be made uh, that they are the most energy efficient, low energy consuming purchases as possible. But I'd love to hear more about that at the next meeting, how that uh, comes up with, with those. So again, thank you so much to the team and um, uh, onward. So, so happy about this. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Um, I'm looking to see if any other, I don't see any other hands in the public up. Um, nope. All right, so we're back to the panel. Any comments, questions, issues to consider as we put together agendas for the next meetings? Bruce. Kathy, I don't know whether I've asked this before or not, but I, I will now again. Um, uh, on the planning board, I'm a member of the planning board, and the uh, chair of the planning board routinely reads the members of the public in attendance before taking public comment. Um, if this was a real public meeting, uh, attendees would be able to look around the room and see who else is there. But um, unless we read the attendees, there's no way that uh, people who are attending know who's in the audience. And I wonder, could we get into the habit of reading the names of the attendees? It seems to be appropriate for a public meeting that that be done. Is that something that we can do in future? Um, if there is no objection to doing that as chair, I'd be happy to do it. Paul? Yeah, I don't object to doing it, but I just want to make a note that these meetings, it, that doesn't mean that's the universe of people who are watching these meetings. These meetings get 
posted online. Everybody can watch them. Um, you know, if they're recorded by Amherst Media, so lots more than people who are happen to be in the room at the time uh, are also watch, can also watch these meetings. Uh, I don't know how many people watch this these meetings in particular, but um, but I think it's you know people have, people have taken the time to participate in the meeting by being in here live. It's it's fine to listen to say their names if we yeah. know who they're who they are. Some some people we don't know who they are. And like, just like in a public meeting, you may not know who everyone is in the room. Uh, you might just say, you know, Joe's iPad or something like that, that doesn't tell you who that person is, just like you might oh. see somebody you don't recognize in a room. So I don't think it's a, um, necessarily, um, it's just a, a, a curiosity versus a comprehensive allocation of who's in the room. Thanks, Paul. Deb? Yeah, um, I would make this sort of a similar observation that people can come and go, and um, there's no way of actually keeping track of that in a way that updates a total list. And then with uh, the remote participants, I happen to be Richard's iPad. I don't know how I managed to log in that way, but it, it's a little bit confusing to read some of those and interpret them appropriately. That's all. Oh. Okay, so uh, it it can become a practice um, for good or not good. The list doesn't tend to be very long, so it's not going to take a lot of time. So I do I do thank everyone for joining us, uh, getting up and on Zoom at eight thirty in the morning on a Friday, and hopefully this meeting time continues to work because it'll be our Friday morning uh, going forward. And I, 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 I'm assuming, Paul, we will figure out some way to put a press release on it. But it is thrilling that this the school is is really a go green light now, and it's a green light in so many ways. I mean, Maria said some of the things, but we we uh, are it's going to be an amazing asset for our kids, for our community. Um, and for the town on its energy initiatives, and hopefully we can be building on this, um, the the success and this amazing team <laughs> that managed to put out bid documents that didn't require lots of revisions and lots of questions. I looked at some of the back and forth, and they were simple kinds of questions. So thank you for all the work that went into the design work for the building as we move forward. And I just, I'm just thanking you for our whole group. Um, you've been wonderful to work with, and I hope continue to be. So I think with that said, um, the meeting, unless there are any other hands, then we can adjourn the meeting at 923. Thank you all. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.